Hi, I'm Mike Natanson, and this is The Rambling Architect. Today I want to talk about architecture and the illusion of permanence. Now we can look at the subject from the abstract and metaphysical side, but also from the practical side. So at the abstract level, if we look at both Eastern thought and Western thought, it's clear that nothing in the material world is permanent. And this is really a metaphysical argument that is very easy to prove. When we talk about architecture at a more practical level, however, the situation is very different. And this is evident even in the language we use. We speak of building permanent structures, as if we're presuming that our structures will exist forever. Or at least we're hoping they will. What I'm going to argue here is that not only such aspirations are highly unlikely to be realized on a practical level, and I'll present some statistics to back this up, but they're actually counterproductive for 21st century architecture. So let's look at a few numbers for what we call permanent structures. A study of UK residential buildings found that 46% of demolished structures were between 11 and 32 years of age. Another large study from Japan found that the typical lifespan of office buildings is between 23 and 41 years. Another study shows that in 2001, the United States had about 120 million residential buildings with an average age of 32 years. So this already shows that what we call permanent structures are not necessarily that permanent after all. Now even if we look at the other extreme, at structures that exist for hundreds and even thousands of years, we have to ask ourselves how many of these structures exist as mere preserved relics of lost past and how many of these are actually inhabited as part of a living culture. Even the oldest preserved structures we have, that may be a few thousand years old, are nothing compared to the span of at least 30,000 years when humans are believed to have constructed and inhabited dwellings. So it's clear that the term permanent structure is actually misleading. What we're really dealing with is temporary structures. It's just that some of these structures are a bit less temporary than others. So if we understand that at the metaphysical level nothing is permanent, and that on a practical level the typical lifespan of buildings is only a few decades, why do architects still think of buildings as permanent? Well, maybe it is because architects, like almost no other professionals, have the very real opportunity to leave a concrete and tangible mark on the world that could actually outlive them. Maybe on some deep psychological level we need a sense of permanence in an ever-changing world. Or maybe it has something to do with our unwillingness to come to terms with our own mortality. Who knows? Whatever the reason may be, it is not rooted in reality. Permanence is an illusion. And as I'm about to explain, thinking of buildings as permanent structures is counterproductive for 21st century architecture. Now let's take a step back and look at the issue from a wider angle. Economics 101 tells us that we have limited resources and our overall prosperity depends on how efficiently we allocate these resources. Now, buildings in the US account for about 40% of material use, 72% of electricity consumption, and about 30% of waste output. These numbers alone tell us that how efficiently we use materials and energy in the building industry can have a significant effect on our overall prosperity. But to really get to the bottom of what it means to use materials efficiently in the 21st century, let's consider the following thought experiment. If we take a look at the world we live in, with the internet, smartphones, airplanes, satellites, skyscrapers, and so on, all these things were completely alien to our great-grandparents. Yet, we don't have any more resources than they did, if you come to think of it, we don't even have more resources than our Stone Age ancestors did. The logic here is very straightforward. The Earth we have today with its limited resources is really no different than the one we had 10,000 years ago or a million years ago. With the same resources as our Stone Age ancestors, we were able to create all the marvels of modern life. 
How then can we explain the fact that today, having the same resources as our Stone Age ancestors, hundreds of millions of people can live the life only very few rich and powerful individuals could afford throughout history? Well, the answer is simple. We have a better understanding of science, better technology, our society and economy are better organized, so we're able to use the same resources more effectively. And therefore we're much more prosperous than our ancestors, at least materially. What this thought experiment really tells us is that our prosperity is inextricably linked to how good we are at using the same material resources and energy in ever smarter ways and to the speed with which resources are circulated in the economy. This is particularly important because right now about 15% of the population in the world uses about 85% of the resources. Such imbalance is clearly unsustainable as we go forward. What this also tells us is that if we really care about prosperity, we have to think very carefully about how we use materials and energy in every stage of the life cycle of a building. The guiding principle should be that resources have to be used efficiently, and when these resources are no longer needed for a particular purpose, the quicker they are reabsorbed in the overall economy, the more efficient the economy is and the more prosperous society becomes. There are many implications to this principle in architecture, from thinking about the embodied energy of materials, to designing spaces that are more adaptable to changes in use and to new technologies, to using passive strategies to reduce energy use, and there's simply no way to cover all of these in such a short video. So let me just talk about the one strategy that is most relevant to the issue of impermanence. And that is that we have to design buildings that are easy to assemble, modify, and disassemble. Thus making sure that our buildings remain useful for the longest period of time in a changing society, and also making sure that material resources in the economy flow efficiently, which is key to our social and economic prosperity. What this tells us is that architects can no longer afford looking at buildings as permanent structures. 21st century architecture must fully embrace the idea of impermanence in architecture, since it's the only way to guarantee our economic prosperity in the long term. This is especially true because of the high proportion of resources and energy that go into the construction industry when compared to the rest of the economy. This idea of a cradle-to-cradle -cradle design is certainly not new, but it must be an integral part of a design aesthetic for the 21st century. And this is something I'll expand on in future videos. So in the meantime, please join the conversation, comment on the video, share your ideas, subscribe to this channel, and until next time, this is The Rambling Architect.